Hi. So, uh, my friends Polly and Alistair at Yoga Frog in the Scottish Borders are soon going to be doing a charity event, um, doing 108 Suri Namaskars, 108 sun salutations. And so, it's the next topic that I'll be teaching on when I work over there in uh, next May is going to be all about yoga and the sun. So, Polly asked me if I might just uh, say a few words about, you know, what's what's point of doing 108 sun salutations. So first of all, what is a sun salutation? What is Surya Namaskara? So Namaskara basically means Namaha Kara. So Namaha means to bow. In the sense of basically offering ourselves towards. And Kara means to make. So basically to make ourselves into an offering or to make everything that we're doing an offering towards Surya. And Surya basically means the sun. Symbolic of the light of the world, the light of consciousness, the light which is enabling us to have every experience we ever possibly can have. So the idea in yoga that, you know, we exist in this realm of nature, and nature's duality. It's up and down, it's hot and cold, it's pleasure and pain. It's all these pairs of opposites that come and go. But also, deeper and subtler than that, we are part of a unified field of consciousness. And so the idea in yoga basically is to infuse our experience here in the changing reality of nature with the deepest presence of being that we can possibly muster. So for example, by doing whatever we're doing with the deepest presence we can manage, by doing it with all parts of ourselves. Our heart, our mind, our guts, bringing it all into what we're doing. And when we do Surya Namaskara, the sun salutation, what we're basically doing is we're training ourselves to do whatever we're doing in that congruent, cohesive, integrated way. So we salute the sun, we acknowledge the sun as this light of consciousness that is enabling all of the experiences we have. And so as we do that, we're also reminding ourselves that every experience we have is the opportunity to train ourselves more deeply, more thoroughly in the ways of wholeness. So when I salute the sun, it's like I'm actively reminding myself that I have this light of conscience in me. So when I bow to the sun externally, symbolically, I am bowing to the light of my conscience. That inbuilt support mechanism that guides me as to what is really going to be conducive to having an experience here on earth in this changing realm of nature that is full. Life, because we live in nature, is going to involve change and sometimes that's going to involve suffering. But how can I act in a way that will make me less prone to being overwhelmed by the comings and goings, the ups and downs, the inevitable slings and arrows of life, we might say. So in yoga there's a lot of emphasis on steadiness. So in Surya Namaskara, there's the idea that we are steadily, and for a sustained period, using the support mechanism of focusing on this light of conscience, and consciousness symbolized by the sun, and bowing to it to train ourselves in the way of doing whatever we're doing with every part of ourselves. So, when you do the physical practice of Sri Namaskara, and Sri Namaskara can take many, many forms. It can take a form of mantra, it can take a form of internal meditation. But one way that is often practiced is through these different postures, these different shapes in space. Now, there's a lot we can say about that, and I'll be talking a lot about that. I'm exploring it physically when I come to do the workshop next year. But Basically, we work with our body, with our breath, with our mental focus, with our sensory powers to invite ourselves into a place of steady, dynamic presence. And so we're training ourselves to be able to be steady and centered through the changing realities of the day to day. Now, why would I do it 108 times? Now, 108, there's a lot of esoteric stuff one might say about this. I don't really know why 108 is such an important number. They talk about 
uh, be, like the distance between the earth and the moon and the earth and the sun being 108 this 108 times the diameter of the earth or the circumference of the earth and things like this I don't really know about that Numerog numerologically there are many many layers of significance I'm sure I don't know what they all are but one thing that I do know from experience is that when we work with for example a a support, a meditative support, that could be a mantra, it could be a vinyasa, like the Srinamaskara vinyasa, or it could be a mantra, like when, for example, if you work with certain mantras to the sun, or that energy of illumination, that energy of conscience. When you practice it, when you repeat it 108 times, it gives you a decent opportunity to perhaps really nail it one time. Maybe when you do it a few times, you know, your mind's not quite fully there. You know, but if you do it again and again and again, you kind of get more and more into it. It says that if you do something 108 times, it's going to give us chance to start shifting, let's say, the residual patterns which influence and govern to some substantial degree our behavior. So if, for example, I think, oh, yeah, what a lovely idea it would be to live my life... Um, attuned to the guiding light of my conscience. Oh, I like that idea. I will salute that idea one time. Or I will do one Srinamaskara. Great. But if I do it 108 times, mustering as I do it 108 times, the best concentration of intent and conscious presence that I can, then repeating it 108 times, that's enough times to start having quite quickly a very significant impact in the sphere of our awareness. So, there are many, many reasons to do things 108 times, but one of the reasons is that that is a large enough number that it is going to demand, let's say, some concentration on our part, some uh, lively awareness to maintain the count, how many have I done? Just that is going to demand, let's say, a certain degree of presence, and then that heightened presence is going to allow us to get deeper into the practice, as we get deeper into the invocation and the inv inviting of that particular energy of integrated presence, then we can attune to that more. That can become more, let's say, what we're accustomed to. And when we become accustomed to doing whatever we're doing with deep presence, then that starts to bring tremendous benefit into the day-to-day. -day. We're a little bit uh, more keenly attuned to the light of conscience, we notice ourselves doing things we don't want to do more quickly and we notice ourselves allowing ourselves to do what we need to do a little bit more easily. So, um, hopefully, if you do the 108 Srinamaskara, you'll have a really nourishing experience with it. Doing the physical practice that, that number of times also can train us to do it in a very sustainable way. And that's another key idea of doing things many times in a yoga practice because yoga wants to train us in the ways of sustainable harmony. So you can do a Surya Namaskar in a rather, let's say, careless way a few times. But if you can do it 108 times, it would be really helpful to do it in a way that is nourishing for the body. So when we do it, that's a really, I would say, important uh, touchstone or guiding principle. Let me do it in such a way that I nourish myself. Let my movements be to the field of my body like the gentle spring sunshine is to the spring field. It lets everything warm up and move and grow together in a harmonious way. It's actually uh, middle of October, but the sun's come out. So I came out into the garden to record this. Hope it's helpful. Thank you.